bottom left hand position as the blue zerg we have gamma bear sen coming from taiwan in the top right hand position as the green terran we have fxo strelok he is representing ukraine one of actually two players that have known each other's styles for quite a long time that's important to note both these players are brood war players and they met up several times in the brood war scene Strelok has actually both players have retained their styles. Sen was always that, you know, macro player in StarCraft One. Strelok was always that timing player in StarCraft One. Yeah. So it's interesting to see both of them transition with the similar styles very easily into StarCraft Two. In fact, if we look at StarCraft Two history, Sen has mashed up against Strelok ten times, and Sen's coming on top six to four. Mm -hmm. um, the most important relevant information because some of this data goes back to 2010. But NSL Season 2, Sen went up against Strelok as well and beat him 2-0. Yes, he uh, did. It was different maps, but nonetheless. They're f very familiar with each other's styles, and you can see Sen was, uh, I mean, he's able to play. He didn't really have to scout that much, trusting that Strelok was going to go for very standard openings. That's what Strelok does, um, as he is a very strong master of preparation. And it was interesting, because Strelok d um, suffered his first defeat in NSL Season 2 to Sen. Uh, since then, I mean, Season 1 was almost flawless. He only lost once, I believe. And then Season 2, he was mm. uh, pretty good. I think he went 6-0, and zero and then or 5-0, and zero and then lost his next three matches. So very tough for him, or two matches, something like that. But Strelak, um, you know, showing that he's mortal in these, these seasons after going <laughs> on a very long winning streak. I mean, he did so in Season 3 as well. Yep, so uh, Strelok, he is uh, going for Gasless uh, at, the, um, at the start. Not necessarily going for two racks, but he did start Command Center first last time on uh, Odyssey, but this time he's going to go for just a quick Command Center. He's going to place on the low ground as well. Uh, very, very ballsy, but nonetheless, Sen does get his Overlord to Scout. Now, we if you guys are just joining us again in the middle of the broadcast... This is Antigua Shipyards, and we explained it earlier in the Hug vs. Vibe series, but we have changed this map. The minerals and gas patches are different in the middle of the map, especially in TVZ. Very important it was for Terran to take the center of the map and just really uh, make a... How, well, how would you describe it? Close the gap for pushes, right? It was making it too easy for Terran to push from the center to its erg bases. And so we changed it a lot, Andre, and uh, I think the map's been a lot better for them. Yeah, the position was just fantastic for Terran and then once they established their expansion they which was sometimes a gold sometimes it was just blue but yeah. still once they established that they have another what is that like seven minutes eight minutes to actually mine from that it depends on how many mules are dropped there but they still have a lot of time and sustainability for that type of position to happen where you have center control and you're just attacking the extreme bases well now yes you have that time but it's a lot weaker so as soon as the natural and the main start to dry out, uh, these two positions, this top right hand position and this position over here, as soon as they start to mine out, well, now you're only on one and a half base economy rather than two base economy. And mm. it does weaken you. If you wanted to look at it in economy, that is 75% of what it should have been, or you know, or at least uh, two base. Uh, it's 75% what it should have been, which is a 75% army or 25% weaker army. Yeah. Um. Now, let's check in on what Strelok's doing. You can see that he's going for the third command center directly after his barracks. This is super greedy, and this is very meta as well. Um, normally, you yeah. see the expected double refinery. You can expect Hellions or something, but Strelok going for the, one of the most greediest things you can ever do in a ZVT. And you can see that initially Sen sends a Zergling out, but he doesn't really get much information. I don't think he even caught the saturation or the lack of saturation in Strelok's natural. Which is to be expected. I don't think there should be any saturation at six minutes into the game. Um, so no real huge tells that Sen was capable of doing. Now, Sen is also playing it very greedy. Taking the third base over here very fast. It was actually the same, kind of the same time as the Orb of the Command Center over here. Uh, it will give Sen a lot of different options. But I, I do want to mention one thing. He hasn't gotten gas for a very long time. This does delay a lot of map control. So he could potentially be in a lot of problems if there was some sort of Hellene Marine pressure off of two base. But of course, we know it's different. So Sen doesn't know this, but he's actually a lot safer than he thinks he is. Right now, he, he's actually scared yeah. of a lot of different builds. 
I mean, uh, there's nothing really that Straylock can do aggressively. He's got four Marines, and that's it. He's making his first two Hellions uh, out into the map. And this, of course, is directly because Straylock knows he can play Greedy against Sen. Sen plays Greedy as well. Of course, Sen is capable of mixing in uh, all-ins once in a while, but Sen's not known to do that. You can see he's joining up very comfortably as well. Going to hit up to 60 momentarily. Straylock getting Stim and a couple more barracks. And again, this Overlord Scout not really revealing much here for Sen. He sees the refinery. And he saw another barracks finish up, but he that might have say seen anything. the orbital command centers floating over. By the way, the zergling died right as the orbital command command center floated over. I don't know mm. if he had that like that um, the remnants of no fog of war. You know what I'm talking about when uh, a unit still dies, but you kind of have yeah, like the momentary split second where exactly, you can uh, yeah. watch the units or whatever is floating above it, but. I think Sen's not worried about that. He's trying to see if he can pay attention to these Hellions and the one SUV, which of course is the most threatening part of that composition mm -hmm. attack. Now, look at this. What has Sen seen so far? Four Marines and a couple of Hellions. He knows his opponent is capable of doing some sort of Banshee plus Hellion opening. So he has made Spore Crawlers. I love this decision by Sen. It's so safe and you know it really shows you what a strong player he is. Now, of course, we know Banshees aren't coming out, but it just shows you that, yes, my opponent is capable of doing that, uh, as we've seen in game number one. Let me go ahead and defend against that in case of emergencies. And we see that Sherlock, the first unit, once again, he's getting out his uh, Viking just to clean up Overlords. You can see the, the Marines also trying to push back Sen's Overlord, but he sees the third base, so Sen knows exactly what he's up to. Just gonna continue droning finally getting a layer here for Sen, so uh, what will he choose to do at this point in time? He's doing a very similar thing to last time, and on Antigua Shipyards, Ling Ultra and Fester is very strong. Um, we've seen a lot of players dominate with this kind of style. Stefano in NASL comes to mind. Um, Xenio loves doing that kind of style as well as EVT. And I think, I think I if Sen leans towards that style and the way he's been droning up and getting everything up comfortably, Straylock's not able to do any kind of pressure whatsoever. Is, is it really wise to leave Sen alone this long a time? I would say, um, I don't know. It's, it's difficult to actually say because both these players are just figuring out exactly what they are doing. Um, so, uh, I think it's okay, seeing as you are getting a, a pretty good economy. These three mules actually make up a lot of the difference. Look at the income difference. It's basically the same. So even though there's such a dramatic increase in harvesters, the three orbital command centers really help out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, Zergling Ultra is strong, but it's strong because of the two base Zergling Ultra, where you get two base upgrades and then you get your third base. And why that's powerful is because you always have that uh, upgrade advantage. Whereas this game in particular, you won't have a huge window where five, three ultras are going to be very relevant. So I would say that that style isn't too relevant right now for the build orders that we have. You should be going towards just a standard opening, whether it be Zergling, Baneling, Infester, and then you start uh, taking up to, let's say, you know, ultras or more standard, I think, would be three lords from there. Or um, you just look to do some huge pressure with Zerg and Baelins in the game stage. Yeah, because this is always the toughest part of that. Two shipyards with Zerg searching for their fourth base. You can see Straylock scout it with his Viking and send a force to try to deal with it. Oh, and Sen also is revealed for another fourth base attempt. Now, this drop really shouldn't be able to do anything, really, if uh -oh. it drops to third base. But the fact that he's going up against this wall here is also fantastic. And uh, Sen is just forced to play defense. But I think he's, he's, he's going to be okay. Yeah, he's good. And this very style is the reason why we see a lot of players going to Spire Tech at this mid-game just to defend against Medivacs to be able to clean them up so their opponents don't have this continued amount of aggression. A couple of Marines will just poke in and try to kill as many um, pre Creep tumors as possible. The Marines are going to get in at this fourth base over here and clean all of them, all, all of the Zerglings up. That's going to be so beneficial for Strela because he's going to remove the fourth base. This base was actually canceled. I'm not sure why, but uh, Sen is going to lose any hope of getting a seventh and eighth gas. And through all this, look at this. Strela has a 2 2 timing geared yeah. up. Well, his 2 2 has been pretty severely delayed. It's oh been yeah, a why long time. Um, since he started. You can see Sen has almost to finish, giving him actually a really strong bow now that Infestors are down to the field. Oh, and the men of are flowing straight above the Infestors. Nope, they're but just going to chill. He's just going to relax. Yeah, you don't have enough fungal energy to actually deal anything. 
so he's just gonna give that up. That's alright. Another day. <laughs> Your time will come. Yeah. But uh, Straylock, he yeah, he's got a pretty good macro setup going up now. It, last time Straylock around this time would be going for a two-two time, but you can see it got slightly delayed because he's microing his medivacs and marines a lot. He's just going to buy more time, sending more medivacs out into the field. Sen finally preparing a spire. He's getting roaches also in this composition this time around, as he sees, again, Sh uh, Strelok leaning over to that marine tank. But, again, I Strelok's going to move out here, try to see if he can hit that 2-2 timing. Leo Reconstitution is just about to finish. This is Roach, Zergling, Baneling, and Fester. Uh, actually, minus the Banelings, forget that. Centrifugal Hooks is almost finished. No, it's not. I'm sorry. 60 seconds away. So that's quite substantial. I take it back for it mm. That's totally okay, man. Oh, Sen having his units on a move command and sacrificing 15, 20 Zerglings very easy there for Straylock. Straylock is maxed. And Tutu's finally about to hit. Now, uh -oh. Sen has a one infestion. Tries to see if he can hold off and delay the push. Well, Fungal could have been the biggest fungal of, of your lifetime. Oh, and there Sen does manage to land on one of them, but does whiff on another. Banelings do snipe a couple of units. Sen going to try to go for a counter attack, because uh, this position from Shellock is just too hard to remove himself from. And now Shellock has to just defend back at home, and he's good to go. The Roaches take a huge hit to the face from tanks. And with that, Shellock's able to shut down this base. And if Shellock can just keep Sen to three bases, yeah, he is going to be sitting very well off just because Sen's going to run out of ability to really yeah, back Yeah, Sen off. really mispositioned this. I'm really confused about his actions overall. A lot of times, I mean, roaches are not supposed to, you know, um, you know, come up the tail end. They're actually supposed to lead the way, take the initial shots, and then the zerglings come in so they don't get mutilated toward uh, to the, the tank fodder. But as you can see, another drop comes in here and will be able to do a, a significant amount of damage to Sen, considering he doesn't have a lot of bases. Yeah. Um, and through all this, Strelok will actually keep all of his siege tanks and marines in the bottom right hand oh push. And he'll be able to congregate all of his units together and push in for an even stronger push than we had before. And I think the Sen is even less equipped for this attack. Yeah. Because he has seven corruptors out in the field, or at least seven corruptors coming out on the field. And that's a lot. That's 14 to 5. That's not going to be able to have any sort of relevancy in this attack. I've just been realizing that Sherlock's been targeting the queens. And there is this whole time. Sen's been on one queen. You can see he's running low on larva. And he's not even really to make that many units. You can see the Zergling trying to go in with the fungals. But there's just so many tearing. Just look at all of these tanks in fantastic position. Now, a lot of Marines did, in fact, die. But that won't matter because there is just no confrontation ability power. From Sen, he's making his Brewlords, but this is a great timing. And you can see that Straylock had his map planned out very well. Keep Zerg on three bases while he's able to execute a very strong push. Roaches are trying to come in here, but they are going to get lit up by the Terran army. Sen trying to expand to the top left side, but really won't have enough time by the time uh, Straylock's able to finish up this push here. Yeah, but he's just waiting for those Brewlords to pop out. They will pop out in time, but the third base looks to be under attack, and he just has to focus that down if he wants it to go down. Very nicely played by Strelok. Now, here's a perfect example of how you can go Marines, Thors, and Vikings to deal with his opponent's army composition and have no troubles whatsoever. And it's because, of course, he can just overpower and out macro his opponent. It's a really good way to actually deal with it because Sen has no capabilities of really no. maxing out with this composition. Because even if, oh man, Sherlock has discovered those bases as well. He's got a few Marines picking it off. Now Sen does clean up the majority of the units. In fact, yeah, actually there's no attacking units left here from Sherlock. And his medivacs are out of energy as well. So uh, he's done a pretty good job there holding the front. The Thor and the Vikings also oh, arrived wow. to the battle. And there <laughs> it is. There's no real answer to tanks. Really pushing the investors back and with no ability to answer. GG comes out out of Sen. Straylock takes game number two on Antigua Shipyards, tying the series and keeping his hopes alive. Yeah, really nicely played. I have to say, um, Sen, I think he was still in a, a, an uncomfortable position with his fourth base and his fifth mm -hmm. base being continually targeted down. He needed that extra economy, especially for his opponent powering up like that. Um, he didn't know he had that 2-2 timing. Actually, he shouldn't have had that 2-2 timing. It was a little bit of a misstep by Strelik. Yeah, it was really delayed. But still, I mean, Strelik with a beautiful push, great positioning, making sure he's very passive with it, uh, and, and then just poking, killing that fourth base, coming back, making sure to do a little bit of aggression, to bait all those units away, and then to drop back. 
Uh, it was just beautifully played. I think one thing that Sen could have done, as we were talking about, get the Spire. Make sure you can take out those medevacs. That's a key thing. Or at least corruptors. I don't care. Something to take out those medevacs. Mm -hmm. But with the medevacs and marines um, just doing their damage and, and forcing his uh, opponent to be in really uncomfortable positions, he yeah. could never keep his fourth and fifth base. Yeah, uh, that fourth base so critical as Sen was powering droning at that point yeah. and didn't really have an answer to Strelok's positioning. Game number two was brought to you by iBuyPower, the pre-assembled PC company where you can uh, get your own personal computer. Uh, just are ready assembled by the time you get home. Go to iBuyPower.com and check it out. Don't go anywhere. Game at number three between Straylock and Sen. Who will take control of the division? Again, find out after this break.